Mr. Bradbury, uh, thank you so much for speaking to Taxutra and uh, uh, the first day at the Seoul EFA conference uh, the morning has been very interesting and you specifically emphasized on Action Plan 11 which you particularly championed and the inclusive framework. Uh, so far uh, a lot of discussion has been on the creating rules and now the implementation, the focus is on the implementation. So could you tell us more about this inclusive framework uh, specifically? Sure. Well, we were asked, the OECD was asked by the G20 finance ministers to, to go off and to look at creating a, an inclusive framework for the implementation of the BEPS project. Uh, obviously, we have handed down the, the reports that contain, contain the recommendations, including the minimum standards, and now uh, it is all about implementation. And as we move into the implementation phase, it's important that we have a, a structure, a framework that is inclusive, uh, that allows uh, the largest possible number of countries to be a part of that implementation process. Uh, obviously, effective and consistent implementation will be the key to the success of the project. Uh, but even moving forward, uh, there is still room uh, for an opportunity to uh, discuss and to engage with new countries as they come on board and join the process uh, about uh, tax reform possibilities in the future. Uh, but clearly, that's a matter for the future. Uh, the here and now is really about embracing the opportunity of an inclusive framework so that collectively we can get on with the business of implementing the minimum standards. Right. Uh, on the inclusive framework, again, more specifics, you mentioned in your speech in the morning that 90% uh, of the GDP is being represented in the current participation, the countries who participated so far, uh, and the inclusive framework will sort of uh, allow the remaining countries to participate on the equal footing. Um, uh, so, so how the countries, uh, how do you expect the countries who are so far not on the BEPS framework to come under this? And could you give uh, a few examples of how the countries would might benefit from this? Sure. Look, I think there will be tremendous benefits for countries that come on board and join the inclusive framework. And that's certainly the early feedback that we're receiving from, from countries that are really interested in being a part of the next steps. Uh, clearly, the benefits of the hard work that has already been done uh, can now be available to be shared by all. Uh, and that is an opportunity that's been presented to countries that can join the project uh, and can, uh, in committing to the implementation uh, of the recommendations of the BEPS package, uh, they will be able to obtain the benefit of that hard work that's already been done in building the consensus that exists in those proposals. But as we move forward, uh, in particular in relation to uh, the capacity building opportunities, uh, we are uh, working with other international organisations to develop toolkits that will assist in many key areas of implementation in the BEPS package. Uh, and these will be outputs that will deliver real and tangible benefits to countries uh, that want to be able to implement the BEPS measures and get on with the business of contributing to a broader discussion around implementation, monitoring and tax policy for the future. Right. You mentioned about involving other organisations and you mentioned that United Nations IMF uh, uh, has been involved and has been on board and anything one more uh, sort of uh, uh, entity. So could you elaborate on this particular framework? Is it more of an informal nature? Is it more like a consultative thing? Uh, how will it pan out? Sure. Look, the, the G20 Development Working Group has uh, mandated uh, that the international organisations, uh, the OECD, the IMF, uh, the UN, the World Bank organisations, uh, come together to help develop these toolkits to support uh, low income and developing countries, particularly those that have uh, resource constraints um, and, and need support in order to address some of these challenges. So in responding to that mandate, we've been working together. Uh, there's been very good and strong collaboration and we are moving towards a, a platform for collaboration on tax matters. And this is something that I think uh, will strengthen the, the consistency and the coherence uh, of the advice that's coming forward from international organisations. Uh, where all international organisations are focused on one thing, and that is delivering uh, for the benefit of all countries across the global tax community. And that is ultimately 
critical if we are to support effective and consistent implementation of the BEPS measures. So it's, it's to some extent unprecedented levels of cooperation, but that's exactly what's needed in order to ensure the effective and consistent implementation right. of those packages. Right. After Panama leaks and, uh, you know, last over two months, there has been a lot of discussion and debate uh, and uh, whether WEBS project vis-a-vis uh, Panama leaks is being compared and, uh, and, and should the scope of WEBS therefore is very narrow or could something different have been done? Uh, of course, we have heard uh, OECD also react very strongly uh, and the commitment on the information exchange. Uh, do you expect that there'll be any course correction as far as BEPS project is concerned post Panama leak? Look, I think it's important to recognize that uh, if you look back over the last uh, almost, uh, not quite a decade, but almost the last decade, uh, the G20 has been very active, uh, generally working closely with the OECD to tackle some of these key global tax issues. The BEPS project is one key pillar and that has largely been focused on multinational tax avoidance. Uh, but before the BEPS project, uh, we had the transparency agenda of the G20. And uh, the OECD, and then subsequent to that, uh, through the Global Forum, uh, we have been working very closely uh, with the G20 and other nations. Uh, the Global Forum uh, has a very, very broad and diverse membership and has been working very hard to ensure an improved level of transparency across the world. And we've seen real and meaningful results uh, over that time. Right. Uh, but, of course, there is more to do. Uh, the work that we have undertaken and have been spearheading in relation to the automatic exchange of information, uh, that is crucial. Uh, with the, the, the work that's been done there, we have a very large proportion of, num of, of countries that have signed up to the implementation of the automatic exchange of information. Uh, in fact, uh, all key financial centres are on board uh, and we're moving towards implementation. And ultimately, that transparency that the automatic exchange of information will bring will be one of the most powerful tools that can be brought to the table in tackling the sort of fiscal evasion uh, that is, uh, is, is lingering in the shadows of the sorts of activities uh, and revelations that we are seeing from things such as the Panama leaks. Obviously, um, the documents, huge trove of documents have been released. Um, not everyone mentioned in those documents is necessarily sure. going to be involved sure. in some improper activity. But we, we certainly see that the fact that so much activity was occurring in the shadows, um, the transparency agenda is about, about bringing that out into the open so that there is transparency about individual affairs, that the days of being able to hide your assets offshore in secret uh, are going to be a thing of the past, right? And that's crucial, right? So essentially, uh, no specific uh, change, a major change in the approach uh, uh, post Panama leaks, because uh, especially the critics of Best Project has said that uh, has OECD kept its focus too narrow. Uh, any any comment on that? Well, well, I think. Um, if you just focus on the BEPS project, you're missing the broader range of things that have been done. And the work of the Global Forum in improving transparency has been significant. Uh, we are moving into the next phase of reviews, which will much more closely focus in on the question of beneficial ownership, which will be very important as well. Uh, but let's not, let's not forget uh, how much progress has been made. Sure. And let's also remember that the documents that were released as part of the Panama uh, Papers, they extend over a period of decades, yes. in fact, most of my lifetime. Uh, so um, let's not necessarily draw conclusions about uh, the success or otherwise of, of projects and efforts that have been in place for a short period of time. But even on that front, we have seen considerable progress. Uh, and since these revelations, Excellent. We've seen further countries now commit to the automatic exchange of information. Uh, jurisdictions that were uh, less likely to commit beforehand, but this has created even more momentum. And ultimately, we think that that will help us move towards the position we need to get into where there will be even greater transparency. Right. Last question, uh, David. Uh, a very significant uh, update in the Asia Pacific in the last 48 hours, the India Mauritius Tax Treaty, the capital gains. Uh, uh, which has been a very uh, major area of pain point and uh, uh, especially on the government side um, and, and you have a new protocol wherein 
uh, capital gains will be taxable uh, in the source country in a phased manner of, uh, over the next two years. The change is prospective. Any comment uh, on this specific development, especially in light of the larger picture around BEPS, which we are, with which you are trying to paint as well? Yeah. Look, I, I have not had the opportunity to look in great detail at all aspects of the announcement, but uh, it certainly appears to be a hugely significant uh, development and one that appears to be very well received uh, almost universally across the board. Um, and um, the way in which it appears the government has approached this measure um, in a very sensitive way, uh, ensuring its prospective effect, um, giving time for arrangements to be uh, regularised, uh, this is a positive thing. But most importantly, this is about tackling an area where there was a lot of activity going on, uh, treaty abuse related activity, um, round tripping type activity, and uh, it was all acknowledged that this was the case because of uh, the specific terms of that particular treaty. Now, uh, the fact that the two nations have been able to come together and to address that, and as I understand it, there will also be uh, the uh, introduction of a limitation on benefits clause uh, into the mix, which uh, is further a further indication uh, that uh, the work of the BEPS project has helped provide impetus towards these sorts of outcomes. But I think it's a, a very significant development and one that shows uh, that collectively across the globe uh, there is a real genuine commitment to tackle these issues. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Bradbury, for speaking to us. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you.